Bienvenido a Miami, the podcast daily Monday at Battle 7 on 7. My first ever experience at a camp like this. That is Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. And, buddy, this was something else. Yeah. I don't know how you do it. I, I don't think that people truly understand sometimes the insanity, but also the inanity around <laughs> recruiting mega events like this as you said we're down here in fort lauderdale we're at the battle seven on seven tournament we are recording this folks to be published on monday morning but it is right now seven o'clock on saturday evening we've been here since 11. there are still about three hours left of competition um including some big time players from georgia like john Tay gilbert ohio state's 2025 commit kj bolden etc who have not played yet today so they don't even get to the park until 7 30 at night and uh there have been thousands of the best high school players in the country. Some good football, some not good football, but the fact is these events are an absolute chaotic circus nightmare, but I love them so much. Yeah, uh, they're, they're made for you. I, I don't know that I have the patience that you do or the stamina or yeah. the energy, uh, but it was, I thought it was important and cool to see it once at least, and yeah. maybe other times in the future, there, there's certainly some evaluation that can come out of it. There's an exposure to the personalities involved. You get to see a lot of competition as well. Uh, it's it's just unique in the fact that it's not real football. Yeah. And I don't mean that as a slight to anybody participating in this, the quarterbacks, wide receivers, defensive backs getting work, but you're missing the key element up front. And so that's part of it. And they're not tackling. So. I'm not saying anything that people who watch seven on seven or follow your, your recruiting coverage don't already know, yeah. but I am wondering as we leave how much stock to put in evaluations out of something like this. Well, the only places you can get real evaluation is how does the quarterback throw the ball? What's his timing? How, how fast is that internal processor? You only have four seconds to throw a ball here. And if you have four seconds to throw a ball in college, you've got, that's a world of time. Out here, it seems like a lot of quarterbacks have a very difficult time reading the, the play. You can really see how guys move. That's the biggest thing. And that's why college camps, like the, the June camps that they do at Ohio State, the biggest thing is just seeing how guys move. And when you see a guy like Jeremiah Smith, for example, who's the number one ranked receiver in the country, a 2024 um, five-star who would have been a five-star in the class of 2023, would be a five-star in the class of 2025, would be probably the number three receiver on the Ohio State roster right now. Like you can get a sense of like, holy crap, when they say can't miss, you know what they're talking about when you see a guy like Jeremiah Smith. But as you alluded to earlier, the value for, for myself in a position like this and in, a, and in a camp like this, a setting like this, is that it's FaceTime with kids who otherwise don't really know who you are. The, the recruiting world has gone so crazy in the last decade that there are hundreds of people every day reaching out to these kids who cover the, the schools or the the you know are trying to get themselves into the recruiting world mm -hmm. that are just looking to it, it's over inundated on a daily basis. So for guys like Jeremiah, like they're like, oh, this is who you are. So they know like who who who's who's fine or who who to talk to or who covers who and it's really valuable in that way, but it, it is uh it is chaos other than that i think movement and, and as you said personality makes it valuable so what do you think was the most important thing that you learned this weekend uh well i got to talk to julian saying ohio state's uh you know latest offer at quarterback 2023 i'm sorry 2024 five-star carlsbad california committed to alabama he didn't entirely dismiss the idea of being interested in ohio state but he did say i'm committed to alabama i'm not thinking about any other visits but he also wouldn't rule out that you know, he threw in the asterisk. College football is crazy. A lot of things can change. The most important thing really is that he's a guy that Jeremiah Smith mentioned as I'm recruiting these players. So when he's talking about how to go replace Dylan Rayola in the class of 2024, I asked Jeremiah straight up, like, who are the quarterbacks you want? And he said, I'm going after Jaden Davis, who, you know, people who follow our work have read about and heard about Jaden for a while. But then his, the next one was Julian saying and saying, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to flip him from Alabama. So. You know, this is big boy football. There are thousands of kids out here. There's 15 or 20 that Ohio State really wants to, to make a run at. And when you have Jeremiah Smith, who, I mean, we've been out here again since 11 o'clock. How many other teams, how many games that were going on did you see crowds <laughs> gather? 
No, none like uh, when South Florida Express were playing. Right, uh, and that's and Jeremiah Smith does things, and people want to watch him play. Um, they want to stand in the way of our cameras well, that's when we're too. trying to get some footage to share as well. That's true too, because uh, he made some tremendous plays. Yeah. Now he, out of out of all the games that I watched today, I don't really remember seeing anybody else in a seven on seven setting command double coverage the way that he did. So some of it early on, the first we got, we got to watch him play three games. Like he was just having to eat up coverage and close down space with some pretty remarkable speed. Uh, that you don't need an evaluation for, really. Um, he did get the opportunity to catch some balls later on. A couple spectacular touchdowns. Uh, had the had the Ohio State gloves on and all that. I, I didn't need to see much more than that to know how good he is. He validated that uh, in any setting. I think the athleticism would shine through. To, to your point about you know the quarterback situation, I think more people are going to be curious about than anything else be, about that more than anything else because of the Dylan Rayola factor and everything else out there. Alabama's going to have changes to their offense. We know that that's coming. Uh, I don't know if that's the crack in the door that Ohio State needs or just simply the fact that Ryan Day has proven that there's a quarterback you pipeline at Ohio State, especially now with C.J. Stroud uh, going to be a top 10, top five, who knows how high top first round pick. You know, that that is very appealing to all of these guys that they, they don't deny that part. Nobody can. Yeah, I talked to Julian Sane and I, again, I asked him, you know, you're from California, CJ Stroud's from California. You watch him go to Ohio State and he says, yeah, but Bryce Young's from California too. And I watched him go to Alabama and I see what he can do there. Yeah. And, and these kids are smart. And that's one thing I think is really lost sometimes in this whole, um, again, I keep saying the word circus, but that's what it is. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of nuance that goes into these conversations with kids and a, a guy like Julian saying who is understanding that Bill O'Brien is probably going to be leaving Alabama that is the type of thing that you talk about because the next offensive coordinator at Alabama may not like him and, and if he doesn't like him then that changes the relationship so you're paying attention to that stuff but these kids are all aware of the fact that Ryan Day's offense is different uh, we're, we haven't got to watch Colin Hurley yet 2025 quarterback who reclassified to 24 he's committed to lsu but you know he was a guy that everyone talked about as a potential fit for ohio state in the class of 25. he's getting ready to play his first game out here where i'm interested to watch him throw it around a little bit he's got an explosive arm but all these 24s are looking at the big picture and what we're going to see and some of it is even just being talked about here today i've talked with jeremiah smith is that when dylan rayola decided to reopen his recruitment it looks like Georgia may be the eventual team that he picks. That's going to throw a whole bunch of things into into chaos as far as quarterback recruiting goes. And we watched Ohio State with C.J. Stroud. They didn't panic. They got him in, in November, um, you know, with um, Devin Brown, same thing. Now with Lincoln Keenholz, they are not worried about the quarterback recruiting. And when you see quarterbacks out here like this, you kind of understand why. There's a lot of unfinished products. Even Sayin was pretty good. Um, probably my pick for MVP of the day if I had to pick one, but I, I don't know that he was head and shoulders above anyone else. And he's a five star, you know, Bryce Underwood from uh, Detroit, 2025 quarterback, who Ohio State offered in December. His first game, he threw five interceptions, uh, not good. <laughs> Next game, he threw six touchdowns. So like you, the, everyone's learning out here, and it's a lot of fun to watch, but it it, it is hard to get tangible, you know information about what a player is it's more about figuring what they're into what they want um and that's a lot of that stuff's going to be over at ohiostate.rivals.com but you know saying especially and figuring out what happens next is, is going to be fun yeah that's that's one of the things that i learned pretty quickly is that you know these are these are club teams these are essentially aau basketball and you're not it's not your high school coach yeah. so th these aren't offenses that you run uh, and drill every year to go win games in August, September, October, and November. So like there, sometimes it gets a little ragged out here. As I said, you're also not tackling, though, so there's a lot more, um, <laughs> I don't know, freewheeling nature to it. And that, I feel like they should at least have flags on these kids. Yeah. Just playing tag is not. Yeah, that part, that part, I was not expecting any of that. I'm not really sure what I expected, but uh, it, I, I did have to keep that in mind and in perspective. Like, these are not going to be the most serious evaluations of any player that you're ever going to have. But that being said, is there is there anybody else that uh, 
flashed to you that you weren't well, expecting to, to get to know or get to watch today? Uh, watching, I mean, again, so much of today was about South Florida Express because that's what people want to see. But JoJo Trader, who is a five-star wide receiver in his own right, he was wearing Ohio State slides, you know, take that for what it's worth. And he, he's a guy that the Buckeyes have really been close to for a while. And I asked him how much Jeremiah Smith's decision impacted it. And he said, you know, changed it quite a bit because those two have talked forever about playing uh, in college together. You also get the sense, on the other hand, that JoJo is very comfortable being in Florida and maybe not the type of kid that wants to leave uh, the state. And he's talking about Miami, and but he's also looking at Alabama and Georgia. It's the thing that you really get out of these conversations is Ohio State is an SEC team to these kids. And that's one thing I heard over and over. Well, I, I think I want to play in the SEC, but Ohio State's different. They, they're they like the Big Ten's SEC team. It's also interesting, I heard a couple of kids that they say, well, the Big Ten is the one that put two teams in the playoff this year. So, you know, and now they're getting USC hmm. and Penn State finished in the top seven. And you're starting to see perhaps a little bit of the shine wear off of the SEC in general, even though Georgia, I mean, Every kid out here was wearing Georgia gloves tonight, it seemed like, uh, <laughs> except for Jeremiah Smith. But that is that is a mountain Ohio State's going to have to continue to climb for the next decade plus. So you, you do get the sense from these kids, the elite of the elite, nothing has changed in their mind about the way they view Ohio State. I mean, period. So Charles Lester, a high high four-star cornerback, we mentioned talked about Tim Walton and just raves about the guy. But he's also mentioned that, hey, he brought Keenan Bailey into school, and I loved him. So, like, all these guys – see Ohio State in the way that Buckeyes fans should, I think. Is that I'm not trying to attack Buckeye fans. I know people don't like when we are negative about the fan base, but I, I think it is re refreshing to see that there's not like this dynamic or seismic shift in the way recruits are receiving the Buckeyes program. Yeah, they're, they are more in tune with the three playoffs in four years, carrying weight and NFL draft success, I think, maybe than – Sometimes Ohio State gets credit for, even sometimes from us. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, heck, I'll be very honest. When I when I went up to JoJo Trader and said, hey, can we talk? He had just finished three interviews, and he looked like totally, uh, I do not want to do any of this. I said, hey, cover Ohio State. And then all of a sudden, he perked right up. So that still carries weight, even for us. I mean, yeah. the Buckeye brand is not weakened. Um, you know, as you said, they've been in the playoffs three the last four years. So. Yep. And um, so we heard a lot about that, and we're going to, Get ready to pack it up and head uh, back north out of South Florida. Are you ready to go home? Not particularly, <laughs> but um, I guess I have to. I okay. have obligations there that I'm supposed to take care of. <laughs> so it's been an eventful uh, few days. We hope that you were able to check out uh, the first episode of Dream Chaser with Cam Brown while we were down here. We have uh, a lot more coming with him with his path to the draft. Uh, so check that out if you haven't already. Berm's going to have a ton of content come from the Battle 7-on-7 seven seven down here in Miami. That'll be at ohiostate.rivals.com and probably on some Talking Stuff episodes uh, in the coming days and weeks ahead. Uh, and then uh, more stuff coming later on on Monday. We'll be in Roosters uh, for the live show in the Horseshoe Lounge. And um, Off-season content doesn't slow down for Ohio State, so we're going to keep our foot on the gas as much as we can. He's Berm. I'm Austin. We will see you all back in Ohio.